This is the Citroen C5X plug-in hybrid and in this review we're going to find out if it drives like a lovely French lounge on wheels or whether it handles like a barge through the bends and you'd be better off with a Skoda Superb Estate. Let's find out. Before we hit the road don't forget to check out cinch.co.uk or download our app when searching for your next car. Ooh, massage seats. Now I have to be honest, that comparison with the Skoda Superb Estate isn't really the most direct one because, well, this isn't a true estate. It's more like a big hatchback. But from the driver's seat, it's a big spacious car and it's very long. So there are many people I'm sure who may have this on their shortlist alongside that Skoda. But I think just 10 seconds behind the wheel of this C5X will confirm to them that this is nothing like most of the other cars in this class. Not least because this C5X is so, so comfortable. Where most other cars are trying to be about 10 things at once, trying to have a sport mode and a comfort mode and then maybe a couple of in between. This thing, yeah, it has drive modes, but in every single setting, on every single road you drive it, it feels like comfort is the priority. Now, it uses a special suspension setup to achieve that. It has to go with its coil springs, a hydraulic damping system. Citroen calls it hydraulic cushioning and it's intelligent as well. So it changes depending on the surface and what's happening underneath the car. And over speed humps and over big undulations, this car genuinely feels like you're driving a cloud. That is an overused comparison, but honestly, it is so soft and so supple. Every time you go up to a speed bump, you're almost inclined to test if you can hit it at a higher speed than before, just to be impressed by the technology. It really smooths out bumps. Like an old school Citroen, Citroen was always known for its comfortable rides, and this definitely has it over the bigger stuff. I have to admit, over some of the smaller creases in the road, or maybe even drain covers that are slightly below the surface, you still get an audible thud through the car, and there is a slight jolt here and there, but it is cushioned around the edges, shall we say. So while you do feel the wheel fall in, these are 19-inch wheels, and there's quite a big bit of tire on them as well, so it's a big wheel and tire setup. So there's a lot of unsprung weight in the car, so you feel that sort of fall into those creases or those drain covers but there's no harshness on the second part of that and the damping really does work well so if comfort is your priority and I haven't even talked about the seats which we will do in just a moment well yeah this thing feels like it's right at the top of the class but does that hinder the way this thing goes down a road well I have to admit in purely electric mode where Citroen claims you'll get about 38 miles of range from the battery alone. And I certainly did most of my urban driving this morning in purely electric mode, although I never saw 38 miles on the dash, but I saw over 30. So that setting is where the car feels at its most relaxed and comfortable. I think with this suspension setup, if this was a purely electric car, it would possibly be the most relaxing car to drive because everything's so quiet while being cushioned. But then also in hybrid mode, the engine comes in pretty quietly. It's very seamless. The eight-speed automatic gearbox isn't necessarily the quickest to shift down when you suddenly call for power but overall it's nice and smooth and having the electric there to help smooth out the changes it does feel like an effortless powertrain there's a 1.6 litre petrol engine up front turbocharged and then you've got that hybrid system to help out does it feel all right in the corners though i mean this is a heavy car it's over 1.7 tons with all the electric tech added to it so let's see how it fares in the bends it does feel a little bit wallowy. You're certainly aware of the weight and this car sits quite high as well. It helps the ride to be a little bit higher but it also means that you've lifted up the centre of gravity in the car and so if I just wiggle the car down the road here there is a very noticeable lean each way. I quite like the, the single-minded focus of this car. It doesn't try and be sporty in any way. That being said, the steering actually responds nicely. There's a real natural weighting to it as well. It's light but it's not overly so. So it doesn't feel like it's out of its comfort zone when you're pushing on a little bit, but it also doesn't feel like it's naturally talented in that way at all. We'll come onto this roundabout here and let's just see how it gets around the bend. So put my foot down around the corner. Yeah, there's definitely a, a soft squidginess to it, but I like the honesty of it. It leans into its outside front wheel and then the back sort of wallowing a bit. It's not quite like a boat, but it's definitely a bit boat-like. If you're used to your BMWs with M Sport packages, for example, this thing will feel very wallowy, but it will also feel very, very comfortable. And I keep saying that, but it's true. As for performance, well, on the spec sheet, this thing is pretty nippy, actually. It's a sub eight second time to 62 miles per hour. And in electric mode, you've got plenty of them, certainly enough to keep up with urban traffic and even get onto a dual carriageway with no issues whatsoever. 
but let's give the car a bit of a kick up the backside and put it into sport mode. There is a sport mode, so I know that contradicts what I said about it not pretending to be sporty, but I feel like it's just there because they have to have them, really. Put your foot down, it's still a squidgy ride. Gearbox took a couple of seconds to change down, but actually then once you get going, you really feel the surge of electric torque push you along. We've got 225 horsepower here, so it's quick enough, definitely. And the way that electric torque just comes in instantly makes it just, as I said before, effortless. And that really does all connect together. The effortlessness of it, the fact that it's cushioned, and the fact that the interior, which we will concentrate a bit harder on in just a second, well, it just feels like a lovely Citroen. We do know if handling is a bit more of a priority for you, then you're probably better off going for the purely petrol car. You lose quite a lot of weight in doing so, and that car, with this suspension set up, but less weight, is naturally gonna handle better. But the plus is, especially for company car buyers, or for people like myself, who find themselves driving through the city centre very often, but then also needing to get onto the motorway quite a lot. Well, the plug-in hybrid makes sense as well. There is enough usable electric range to get you through town without pushing out any direct emissions, but then you've also got the range of a petrol hybrid car and the low CO2 figure, and of course, the good fuel economy. So while it's not perfect, it's got enough strong points and some really unique features that do make it feel nice and different from the likes of your Skoda Superb Estates and even your BMW 5 Series Touring. And if I pull over and show you the interior in more detail, we can emphasize just how lovely and how French this car is. So the comfort focus continues in the interior as well, both ergonomically and aesthetically. It feels a bit like a lounge. Now there are many familiar parts and buttons from other brands within the group that Citroen falls, but they have made a big effort in making it feel that bit more French. And that's saying something because other brands like Peugeot also feel French, but this feels like a lovely French living room. The materials and just all the surfaces just feel very high quality. And the seats in particular are so comfortable and so supportive. And that's before you turn on the massage function, which this car has as standard. It is a really lovely place to sit, even when you're not driving. You do, of course, get a lot of technology as well to make driving easier and more comfortable. The screens here are slightly different to what you get in other brands within the PSA group that this is part of, even Stellantis as well. You've got a wide infotainment screen here. And while you can use the actual digital stuff to control climate control, for example, there are also manual analog controls down here, which is excellent. It means you don't have to think or even look at what you're doing when you're driving. You can just turn dials and adjust the heating controls, which is a real, real win in my books. That said, if you prefer your digital stuff, you've got plenty in here. You've got a good working sat nav system, which actually works intelligently with the plug-in hybrid technology to manage where energy is used and for how long. And then you've also got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well, which is really key. And there's a wireless phone charger down there as well to go with the two USB-C ports that you have if you prefer plugging in. So tech-wise, it's very good indeed. You even got a smaller than you do in other brands within the group instrument cluster up here, but it's crisp and sharp. And crucially, versus the Peugeot that this car shares a lot of parts with, you can see it clearly when the steering wheel set in a position I like. It's because the steering wheel is a bit larger in this car. You've also got a head-up display projected directly onto the windscreen. So there's a lot Lots of information here to make you feel like you're really in control of this car but also it helps you a lot there's driving assistance features adaptive cruise control is my favorite of course plenty of parking sensors and a reversing camera that's sharp honestly this is a lovely place to sit and it really feels like excellent value for money it's not a cheap car not in plug-in hybrid form but it feels like a luxury car when you're sat here and the good things continue in the back because you've got these really comfortable cushions even on this back bench here so straight away when you get in the back of the c5x you're thinking wow, this is a comfortable place to sit. And there's loads of space as well. As you can probably see, I've got acres of knee room, plenty of room for my feet as well. And that's despite this being at its lowest setting and how I like it. And there's not bad room above me as well. If I sit with my head back on the headrest, I've got good space to the right and good space above me here. It's not tons of room because the sunroof doesn't open all the way back. It's not as airy in the back here, but it does feel very comfortable. And I just can't get over how much room there is for my legs and my knees. You could spend a lot of time in this car. And if there's just four of you in the car, of course, you've got this armrest down here, a couple of cup holders, 
but if there's five of you well it does get a bit more cramped it is comfortable still really good cushioning here but because i'm sat higher and because there is a slight tunnel between my feet here i'm not perfectly comfortable and my head is grazing the ceiling here so it's a bit more snug so once again like many cars in this class it's a very comfortable four seater a bit more of a snug five seater you've got a few other features as well two vents down here and a couple of usb c's as well and the sound system in this car i should highlight is very good this has the optional upgrade and so you've got these tweeters and speakers down here so even in the back the audio experience is very good when it comes to the boot however it's not all good things there's certainly some good stuff to talk about because this is a big car you do have quite a long boot and with these rails here it's certainly capable of swallowing a couple of big suitcases but because this is the plug-in hybrid model you sacrifice underfloor storage there's only room under here really for your charge cables and maybe some very small items otherwise you're not going to get much under there you just got this area here which is useful and as i said suitcases would go in well but because you've got this swoopy roof line on the back of the car which looks great design wise but it does sacrifice vertical storage space this isn't like an estate car this is much more like a big hatchback that being said it is still very practical so you can pull these things down here and it folds the front bench down in two parts and then it feels a bit more like an estate just with a slightly more aggressively styled tail so it's practical but definitely not the best car in this class if you're looking for space all right so it's not perfect but there are plenty of things to like about this big french baguette it's so focused on being comfortable and just being luxurious inside as well that i really like it it stands out against all of those rivals yes okay some of them are better at handling some have got bigger boots and some have more tech but when it comes to the center focus on making you feel as relaxed as possible the c5x is brilliant 